Paul, I was just thinking about anything I can and will be used against me in a court of law. <laughs> As if making 15,000 videos would be used against me in a court of law. You know, I've said a lot. Anything you say uh, can and will be used against you in a court of law. Did anybody want to admit as evidence any of the videos that I've made about this right to do process? <laughs> I know the whole thought was that these videos are just a, a crazy guy that doesn't understand my right to a speedy trial. Poop. But let's say my public defender pulled out, uh, oh, a thousand videos, and we showed that to the judge. Ooch. See, you have me on the docket after you motion the court to dismiss one of the counts. You used Exhibit A and B, and Exhibit A has the wrong date on it. Mm -hmm. And you used Exhibit B as if to prove, yes, that I did not receive actual notice of the hearings. Yes. The problem is you never admitted any evidence that I wasn't in Brennan, Washington, and I wasn't cyberstalking. Now, if my public defender had asked me, I would have said, well, I sent you 100,000 emails. Mm -hmm. But you're the attorney, and you seem to know what the law says. Now, why don't you just watch some videos, Jack? Why don't you watch today's video? Ouch! Did somebody decide that they were going to play stupid? Right. That I spent the last three years documenting crime, mm -hmm. and you decided in the Sheriff's Department of Jefferson County, yes, the Police Department in Port Townsend, that you just were not going to listen to a guy that's homeless. Mm -hmm. Well, would you have listened to me if I was making $200,000 a year? Mm. Would you would you have listened to me if I owned my own residence? Oh. How about uh, if I had proved that I had uh, an S-corporation, an LLC, or I had clients? Mm. Did the statements that I put on my drive last night help you to believe that I actually managed other people's money? Yes. And they trusted me with their money as well as their private information. And instead of deciding, well, we're going to continue to prosecute, even though it's fraudulent to issue court orders without any due process. <laughs> it's fraudulent to use criminal complaints instead of police departments investigating crime. Yes. It's fraudulent to... Ooch, well, what's it going to take to convince you that I'm not a mentally ill man and though I'm homeless, it's only because of your refusal to enforce the laws. <laughs> now, you're going to need some actual statements. Do you need... Well, let's see. You said that it's arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable to require the actual signature of the protected person. Right. That no one else has to appear in court in the whole United States when they motion courts because you as the court decided that you did not require the actual signature of the protected person. You said, well, we could actually serve the respondent in the Screen Public Library by an individual that is not an actual sheriff, <laughs> even though the court order says that it has to be a sheriff because that's what it says. Ooh. You said I was crazy for not understanding the necessities of what legal documents say. And then you made me, Jack, have one of these, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Because um, you thought that we had to have somebody on our side and you could set it aside for three months and still protect my right to a speedy trial. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go to court on Friday, yes, so that you don't issue a failure to appear, yes. And we're actually going to involve two professional individuals, one works for the state, one works for themselves, yes. And probably a lot of psychiatrists have e &O insurance, yes. Why don't you get me all the errors and omissions insurance of those that make the error, yes, of listening to what the fuck you have to say. Because that's what errors and omissions insurance is about. The erroneous belief that you can involve expert witnesses mm -hmm, in a cell hearing, yes, without the protections of the law. <laughs> now, Judge Porter, oh, look at here, the 5th day of January 2016, yes. 
You could make me go to jail for 27 days for responding to your request that I appear in court. Ouch. I wasn't evading going to court. I just wanted the notice of the court hearing. Yes. And you sent me the email two judicial days before the court hearing. Yes. And then you had uh, a person from Western State Hospital do a 25-minute mental health evaluation where they said I wasn't competent to stand trial. Do you have errors and omissions insurance, Judge? How many state employees? Mm -hmm. Why don't you get me every oath? Mm -hmm. Badge and attorney, yes. As well as all the mandatory reporters, the superintendents of each and every school district, yes. Every principal of every school district that thought that they had to have errors and omissions insurance <laughs> as employees of the government. Just get me all their... UBI numbers, their tax ID numbers, and the actual insurances of their individual businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, for every one of you right now that thinks mm -hmm, that you can work in the government, right, and you can have knowledge of crime, and I don't have the legal right to your actual ownership of your S corporations, mm, C corps, mm -hmm. Your limited liability companies. See, any time that you file for um, an actual business license with the state, or any state for that matter, you understand under the penalty of perjury that what you're going to say on the stand is true and correct. Yes, otherwise you'd be fined um, in contempt of court of perjury. It's an additional crime. So why don't we look at pouch every fucking individual of the United States of America? Because I emailed the civil rights coordinators and I emailed the Squim School District Gary Neal and I emailed Vic Rickabane pooch after my wife left Squim. And for some reason somebody said I was stock stocking. Now I know oh, I'm just gonna want that E and O insurance. Because I will sue your insurers, yes, for having the knowledge that you that have the legal obligation. <laughs> it seems unreasonable mm -hmm. to not protect the respondent's right to due process. Mm -hmm. It seems arbitrary to say, well, he's crazy. As if my wife knows what crazy is. Pooch, poop, poop. This mental health evaluation that respond that petitioners say mm -hmm. that the respondent has to have. You know, I mentioned, I think it was yesterday, yes. This whole wording that you use, yes. Uh, no contact until there's a mental health evaluation or respond treatment if recommended. <laughs> exactly how does my wife know yes, that I need a mental health evaluation? <clears throat> and why does the court commissioner or the judge believe what the fuck she has to say? Because she doesn't know. <clears throat> you know, who was it? <clears throat> that started with the mental health evaluation of respondent. Yes. What actual authority, yes, when issuing the first protection order, said that I, as the respondent, had a mental illness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as I look at it, I wasn't a resident of Washington State. No, no, he wasn't. My wife abducted my sons, yes, on July 2nd of 2011, mm -hmm. alleged domestic violence and child abuse. Mm -hmm. And then you as a county decided to put mental health evaluation of respondent. Exactly what fucking individual in this state right now decided to believe what my wife had to say. He went to prison, is that right? I did seven hours of parenting classes. Mm -hmm. I put the evaluators evaluation on my drive with the other month end statements. Yes. Did the evaluator suggest mental health evaluation? No, I think he suggested reconciliation. Exactly what individual in this state had the authority, yes, to require me to have a mental health evaluation from 2011 without notice 
and the opportunity to be heard. Is Brent based in the court commissioner, a qualified psychiatrist? Judge Porter, are you a qualified psychiatrist to require a mental health evaluation? This two count criminal complaint in Squim, Washington? Yes. I had mentioned numerous times that you never mark the box hold until mm -hmm. court reviews mental health evaluation. Yes. You never put an X on that. Oh. Now, Judge Porter. Yes. Don't I, as the accused, the defendant, have the right to know that you're holding this over until the court reviews a mental health evaluation? It seems that you don't protect the rights of the defendant. <laughs> And you don't protect the rights of the respondent. Ouch. Now, you never put an X where it says hold until the court reviews a mental health evaluation. Bail is hereby set in the amount of personal recognizance. Yes. Now, this whole idea of me not understanding how forms work. Ouch. Well, I had two businesses. Mm -hmm. I was registered with the FINRA. Yes, I was registered with the NFA. Food. I was a licensed life insurance salesman. I have a Series 24, at least at that time I did. Yes, exactly. What the fuck's it going to take for this court to understand exactly what he's saying? Who was it that said I needed a mental health evaluation? 